Hello and welcome back to the next video in this video series about linear algebra. Now in today's part 11 we will start talking about matrices. However, before we do that, I first want to thank all the nice people who support the channel on Steady, via PayPal or by other means. I'm very grateful for all the support, which makes all these videos possible. Okay, so matrices is a completely new topic, but you will see it's not so complicated at all. The reason we are so interested in matrices is because they will help us later to solve so-called systems of linear equations. So a given problem could be described by a lot of equations and then the matrices will help us to find a solution for the equations. In other words, we need matrices to solve problems. Now, the singular is just matrix and as we will see, it's not a complicated object at all. Essentially, it's just a table of real numbers. And later we will see, we can also look at matrices that contain complex numbers. Okay, so you could ask, what do I mean by table, and indeed it should just be a two-dimensional structure. In other words, here we have a width given by a natural number n, and in the y direction we have a height given by a natural number m. This means, in this table we have m times n positions we can fill in with numbers. And often we just call the numbers a and put an index on it. Therefore, the first position here should be 1, 1. Then, here in the second position, we have 1, 2. Hence, the first position here tells us in which row we are and the second in which column we are. So this is something you can immediately remember. From top to bottom we have rows and from left to right we have columns. Therefore, for our indices, this means we continue until we reach 1, n. Okay, and then the second row would start with a2, 1. And then comes a2, 2 until we reach a2, n. Moreover, you should also see in the other direction we would end with a, m, 1. So you see, in general, it's not a square table, it's a rectangle. However, now we know that in the right bottom corner here we find the index a, m, n. Okay, with this, now you already know what a general matrix is. Here the only assumption we put in for now is that all the entries in the matrix are real numbers. So without any problems we can immediately write down an example. So maybe we keep it simple, n should be equal to 3 and m should be equal to 2. Therefore now we have 6 numbers and maybe we start with 4 and 6 and maybe we put in pi as well and maybe the square root of 2, and 1, and 0. Okay, so you see, this is one easy example, but now we want to look at the set of all possible matrices. Of course, this is also not so complicated, but there are different notations one uses for this set. Now, the notation I will use in this course is simply the set R with the power m, the number of rows, times the number of columns. This means if you see this time symbol in the power of R, we mean matrices. So what you should see here is, in this set, the form of the matrix, the rectangle, is fixed by the two numbers M and N. And now the important part is that we will define operations that we can apply to these matrices. And maybe it does not surprise you, the two operations we will define now are the addition and the scalar multiplication. That is what we usually do in linear algebra, because both things together give us a vector space. In other words, in the end we want to calculate with matrices in the same way as we have calculated with vectors. Therefore, let's immediately start with the definition for the addition of matrices. This might not be a surprise, two matrices of the same shape we can easily add. So maybe let's call the two matrices A and B. In other words, we add the two tables of numbers here. For the first table we call the numbers lowercase a and for the second matrix we call them lowercase b. So you see, we have the entries with the indices as before. 
Okay, and then this symbol here is a new operation. It's a new addition. And now we just define it by using the normal addition of real numbers in each entry. So more precisely, in the first entry we have a11 plus b11. And then you see we can do this for each position here. So in the end you should see this is not complicated at all. It's like the normal addition but at m times n positions. Okay, then I would say let's also look at a quick example. So maybe we just use a 2 times 2 matrix with the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4. And then we add the matrix 1, 0, 2, minus 1. Okay, and then you should see this is 2, this is 2, this is 3 plus 2, so 5, and the other one is 3. So you see, this was not hard at all, and the end result is again a 2 times 2 matrix. So you see, this is a well-defined operation, the addition of matrices. However, this operation is not defined if the shape of the matrices is different. So for example, if you take a 2 times 3 matrix like this, so we have 6 entries and maybe we choose them as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, then it's not possible to add a 2 times 2 matrix like 7, 8, 9, 10. So please keep that in mind, this is something we cannot do. Okay, so this is the addition and the next thing we will define is the scalar multiplication. This means now such a table of numbers, a matrix, is multiplied by a scalar. Hence, again, we take a matrix A and in addition a scalar, a real number, lambda. And now we have to explain what lambda times A means. So again, as before, you see this dot here is a new operation. Indeed, in the same way as above, the definition is very natural, we just define it entry-wisely. More precisely, this means in each entry we just use the normal multiplication of real numbers. So we simply multiply lambda with the entry aij. And of course, the result is again a matrix of the same shape. So in summary, you should recognize that both definitions, the addition and the scalar multiplication, look very similarly to what we have done in the vector space Rn. If you don't remember that, then maybe you should look at part 5 again. It's helpful because, as you can see, the result is exactly the same. The space of matrices with the addition and the scalar multiplication is a so-called vector space. And of course, you already know what this means. It means that a lot of calculation properties are satisfied. And just for the sake of completeness, I will show you all of these properties again. However, I want to do this very quickly, so let's get into it. First is, together with the addition, we have a so-called abelian group. This means that four properties are fulfilled here. So it's not hard at all to check all these rules. Maybe one important thing to mention here is, that zero stands for the zero matrix, which is the neutral element with respect to the addition. And the other thing is the inverse we get by putting in a minus sign at each entry. Okay, so these are the properties of the addition, which are satisfied. Okay, then the second thing is about the scalar multiplication, and we say it's compatible. So this is also something we can immediately check. So here it does not matter if we first multiply two scalars and then use the scalar multiplication or do it in a row. And the other one is of course also easy to see. Okay, then last but not least we have distributive laws to combine both operations. They are also easy to prove when you know how to calculate with real numbers. Simply because we do this normal calculation in each entry. And then you just have to combine all these calculations to get these rules here. Okay, so this is important to know. We now have tables of numbers which also act like vectors in this sense here. So we can deal with them in a linear algebraic way. However, we still don't know why we need these matrices at all. Therefore, in the next video we will talk about linear equations and then we use matrices to solve these. Therefore, I look forward to see you there. Have a nice day and bye.